And thanks for joining me uh, in this video today. We're going to be looking at different types of chemical reactions and how we can classify them. Uh, so as we get into this, we've got a couple of new learning objectives. Uh, one is to look at a chemical equation and be able to identify reactants and products. The second one is to be able to classify reactions into one of five different types. With this, there's a lot of vocabulary. So law of conservation of matter, reactants, products, synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. So let's get to it. Um, at the beginning of this, we start with the idea of the law of conservation of mass. This is one of the fundamental ideas in science and particularly in chemistry. It's just simply the idea that whatever you start with, you have to have at the end. Um, if we make it a little bit more fancy, it simply says matter is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Uh, in the illustration you see on the screen, basically everything that we start with is uh, accounted for at the end. One of the weird things about this, I don't necessarily really like. I don't know that we should say I've got one kilogram of fire. What if we said instead, you know, for a, for a log to be able to burn, it needs to combine with oxygen. Um, but regardless, the important part here is that the numbers on the left-hand side, if I added those up, would add up to 31. And the numbers on the right-hand side, if I added those up, would still also add up to 31. Effectively, what that means is that every atom that is present in the log ends up either in the ash or in the smoke. And every atom that's present in the oxygen also ends up either in the ash or the smoke. If I think about it backwards, that means that every atom that is now in the ash would have been either in the log or the oxygen or both. And the same here with the smoke. Effectively, what's going on is we just we have atoms being rearranged. Um, every atom that was there at the beginning is there at the end, although it's not going to be in the same place. Okay. So our atoms get rearranged. The mass remains constant because every atom that we started with is going to be there at the end. We have a couple of vocabulary terms, reactants and products. And what this means in terms of math is that the total amount of reactants is going to equal the total amount of products. So what are reactants and products? Reactants and products are the part of our chemical equation. So if we take that picture and break it down into something that looks a bit more like chemistry, we see what's kind of at the bottom of the screen. Now, what's at the bottom of the screen is not supposed to represent what was on the previous screen. Uh, it is a different example, but in chemistry, we would write out our compounds that we've been talking about. So this is kind of like uh, putting a recipe together. The reactants are the things that are going to be on the left of our arrow. The arrow's um, kind of our dividing point. This is kind of the part where it says, okay, we've added thing, everything together. Now what's going to happen? These are the things we start with. And these are the things we finish with. All right. And so what we'll see is that all the elements, any element that's here, there's elements got to be present on both sides. Right, so we see that there's barium on the left. There's also barium on the right. There's chlorine on the left. Which means there's got to be chlorine on the right. There's sodium on the left. There's got to be sodium on the right. And sulfur and oxygen, sulfur and oxygen. So every element that we start with shows up on the right-hand side. Um, there's also some other numbers that you'll be seeing today that we start sticking in front. Um, this is for a, a later lesson where we try to start balancing these things out. Because the idea is that every atom that starts on one side has to be present on the other. <clears throat> and because of some of the ways they make compounds, for example, the way that there's two sodium to begin with, notice when we make the new compound, there's not two sodiums in this. So those numbers have to be accounted for, but we're not going to be dealing with that today. So vocabulary-wise, reactants are on the left of the arrow, products are on the right of the arrow, and oftentimes this arrow is read to mean yield. Sometimes we'll also see things in parentheses to give us an idea of what would this look like. AQ stands for aqueous, which is, I think of aqua or agua. Uh, this is going to be a liquid or a solution. If we have an S, that typically means it's a solid. Sometimes we'll also see a G, which is a gas. There's five types of chemical reactions that we will eventually want to be able to classify things into. And this is typically what you're going to be assessed on is to be given some formulas or excuse me, given, given some equations and say, what, what's going on here? What kind of equation is this? So the first one's called a combustion. Um, I think of combustion as burning. And so usually when we burn, we have to have what's called a hydrocarbon. And this is one of these things that fortunately kind of makes sense. A hydrocarbon has hydrogens and carbons in it. Now there's a gajillion different types of hydrocarbons. So when we talk about a hydrocarbon, this could be anything. It could be gasoline, it could be natural gas, it could be fat, it could be a candle, it could be anything that's got a combination of carbons and hydrogens in it. When something burns, it has to react with oxygen. And in the process of burning, it's going to give off heat. And what's going to happen is the carbons and hydrogens and oxygens are going to rearrange themselves to form the product 
of, of water and carbon dioxide. Uh, this is effectively what's going on in your body when you're eating food. Your hydrocarbon might be sugar or fat or protein. You breathe in oxygen. Um, our body goes through some reactions and breaks the things apart in the process, giving off some heat, which is great. That's what keeps our body warm. Uh, we also then breathe back out the, some water vapor, carbon dioxide. So what we're looking for to identify something as a combustion reaction, again, we are looking for a hydrocarbon. We're looking for an oxygen at the beginning. And then at the end, we're looking for carbon dioxide and water. If we see those things, that should classify it as a combustion reaction. Moving on, the next one is a synthesis reaction. To me, synthesis means to make. Um, and so this is gonna be a reaction in which some smaller things get together to make something a little bit bigger. Typically, we've got elements and or compound, compounds combining to make something larger. You can see in the illustration at the bottom how this might look if we try to illustrate it with circles. In general, this might look like the form A plus B makes AB, where A and B are gonna be elements and AB would be a compound. Um, the other thing we notice too is that usually if we look at the arrow, there's two things on the left side of the arrow and there's only one substance on the right side of the arrow. In real life, the reason I got this picture up here is this happens with iron and oxygen. Uh, when iron and oxygen combine, they form rust. And chemically speaking, when iron and oxygen form get together, they would look like this. This is not a balanced equation uh, that we'll get to later, but this is showing that one element plus another element makes a compound. Okay, so that's a synthesis reaction. The opposite of a synthesis reaction is a decomposition reaction. I think of decomposition as something breaking down or rotting. Uh, this is literally the reverse. So it's larger compounds breaking into smaller ones. So we're starting off with the compound on the left-hand side. There's only one substance on the left-hand side of the arrow, and we're ending up with two substances on the right-hand side of the arrow. This could be illustrated when you take water and run electricity through it, like the illustration on the upper right-hand corner. If you take water and run electricity through it, it breaks apart into the gases that make up water, which is hydrogen and oxygen. If we saw a, a an equation, it would look something like this, where we start off with H2O, and that H2O is going to yield hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The easiest way to notice a decomposition again is we're starting with one substance and we're ending with two. <coughs> Excuse me. The final two are called replacements. Uh, there's a single replacement and a double replacement. They're very similar, but have one key difference. So in a single replacement, you'll see that we usually have an element down here illustrated by the letter C is basically gonna replace one of the elements in a compound. Uh, so we just kind of got a swap going on. The illustration in the upper right-hand corner kind of shows it as well, where we have someone who's single kind of butting in and kind of kicking the other guy out. Uh, so we have an element in a compound and we end up with an element in a compound. So this is a case where we have two substances, at least on each side of the arrow, and there's just some swapping going on, right? Uh, this might look, a little bit fancier with chemistry speak with this way where we've got some magnesium reacting with water. And what we see happening uh, is that basically the magnesium kicks the some of the hydrogen out and the hydrogen is left by itself. In a double replacement reaction, it's real similar, except you can see how this differs from the previous slide. If I go back um, in our dance situation, we've got one couple dancing and a guy trying to butt in. In this one, we've got two couples that are dancing and they basically just switch partners. Okay, so in this case, we have anions, cations, metals, non-metals, pluses, minuses, however you want to think about it, switching partners. So we start with two compounds, we end with two compounds. Uh, in a general form, it would look like this, AB plus CD would turn into AD and BC. If you look at the letters, we've kind of just got a couple of things switching partners here. So the B and the C replace one another. And it looks kind of complicated when we start putting chemical formulas together in an equation. Um, but if we take a, a moment to look at each one, we, we've got a compound plus another compound making a compound plus another compound. The fact that we've got comp two compounds turning into two compounds ends up putting as a double replacement. So let's look at some examples and see if we can classify them and then we just kind of wrap things up. Uh, this first one, what I'm looking for is I've got two substances to begin with, and I've got one substance to end with, and so this is gonna be a synthesis reaction. All right, well this one, I've got two substances turning into two substances. Um, one of the substances is simply just an element though. So I've got bromine by itself, 
and then bromine is basically cutting in here and kicking iodine out. So this is a replacement. And because I've only got, excuse me, because I've got a single element by itself to begin with, and a single element by itself at the end, it helps me to remember that this is an example of a single replacement reaction. The third one, if I start off with H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, I've got one substance and it's breaking down into two substances. This is a decomposition. So one substance turning into two substances, it's decomposition. The fourth one, I've got two substances starting with. I'm also ending with two substances. All right, and then let's look at what's going on. So magnesium and oxygen, now I've got magnesium and chlorine. Basically, the oxygen and the chlorine are switching places. This is a replacement. Um, and because I've got compounds all over the place, this ends up being a double replacement reaction. And then the last one, I've got two substances turning into two, but specifically, I've got a little clue here. I've got a hydrocarbon with oxygen, and that's turning into carbon dioxide and water. I put all that together. That's specifically a combustion reaction. Um, if we wanted to be more specific here too, we might be able to talk about there, there will be some energy generated here. There might be some heat given off. And sometimes we will see that added to an arrow that, that there may be energy coming in or energy coming out. All right. So in summary, what we got is the chemical equations show how chemicals react. Reactants will end up turning into products and whatever amount of reactants we have ends up being the same amount of products we have. And that we can classify all of our reactions into broadly five different reaction types, depending upon what goes out. We've got our combustion, our synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement. Thanks for watching.